Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And as you can see, it's a special episode. Um, <clears throat> so I've had uh, some people request that I do uh, some Israeli wine uh, and kosher wine. So what I've done is to kind of, it's, it's not necessarily a, a thing where you have to do it with Hanukkah, but this is, we were like right in the middle of Hanukkah. This is the 14th, by the way, even though the show will be on the 16th. So we're like right in the middle of Hanukkah, literally. Um, I thought it'd be kind of just a nice tie-in to, uh, to do Israeli wine uh, at this point. So I bought three Israeli wines. I got them all from winelibrary.com. Uh, and um, they range anywhere from 10 to $20. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and start with that. Uh, let me get my notes ready because I have notes about most of the wines. Well, actually, all three of the wines have some kind of notes. So let's pull up this one. First off... This is the Barkin Classic uh, 2007 Chardonnay uh, from Israel. Uh, it says Dan Israel. And um, I'm not sure where this is exactly from, but Barkin is uh, it's a 100% Chardonnay, so there's no other varietals in there. With Israeli wine, uh, wine's been produced in Israel for thousands of years, okay? So they're not they're not new to the to the whole winemaking uh, business, but um, unlike some other areas that have been making wine for a very long time, Israel tends to have most of their most of their wines tend to be the varietals that we all pretty much know. So your Chardonnays, your Cabernet Sauvignons, your Syrahs. Um, see what else we have: uh, Merlot, Petit Verdot. That's some of the other varietals. There's also um, Muscat. Uh, Muscat de, de Alexandria. So you've got some other little bit different varietals, but they, they've got a whole bunch of what we normally uh, associate with, with the rest of the world as far as wine. So um, we're going to take, take a look at this. And, you know, I didn't read the back. No oak. Okay, so um, I'm just going to read the back real quick, or most of it. Uh, the vines yield small crops and ripen early. Hand-picked in small containers, the grapes were rushed to the winery to ensure maximum quality. Hope so. Uh, fermentation is cool and unhurried with no oak involved, creating a wine with a vibrant nose of, okay, they say peaches, guavas, and pears. All right, we'll see if that, see if any of those come through on the nose. But, uh, so an unoaked Chardonnay from Israel. So I'm definitely smelling fruits. Um, maybe, maybe we're getting those guava-like aromas. Nine ninety-eight. This is nine. This is nine ninety-eight. By the way. I'm getting fruitiness. You know, maybe there's some guava. I don't really. I get. I get more of the peaches. I don't really get any pears out of it. But a pleasant nose, uh, so really nice. Let's check it out. Getting the, those fruity flavors again. Um, it's clean. It's crisp. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, it's not oaked. So this is this is the style of Chardonnay that I prefer. I feel like I could get a little. Pineapple out of it. Um, the peaches are there. I'm not really. 
I don't get the guavas or the pears, like they say, at least not on the palate. Um, but I get kind of the peachiness, kind of uh, the pineapple. Uh, it's real clean and crisp. Um, and for $9.98, it's pretty darn good. Um, totally. I give this a... Oh, heck, I'll give it a 90. I was going to give it an 89, but I think... I'll give it a 90. I really like it. I really like the Chardonnay. Very nice. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Um, now, this is the Yeron, uh, from, is from Galil Mountain. It's their Yeron from Galilee. From, so that's the area that in Israel that the, uh, the grapes come from. I'll read the front part of the thing. In, in the upper, Gal, upper Galilee, a wild mountainous region, a forest that slopes, gorges, stony ridges, and running streams lie the vineyards of the Galil Mountain Winery. The winery is located at Kibbutz Yeron. All right, so this is a 2005, and it is a blend. And thank you very much for putting the exact blend on the back label. 50% um, Cabernet Sauvignon, 44% Merlot, 4% Syrah, and 2% Petite Verdot. 1998 at Wine Library. So uh, let's see how it is. I can already tell you I like this wine a heck of a lot. This is right up my alley. Which if you've been watching for the past 101 episodes now, you probably can already guess something I smell on it. I'm getting those peppers. Um, green pepper, almost jalapeno-like. But I also get, funny enough, and maybe it's just because I had it from the Chardonnay, like this pineapple-y thing. It's like pineapple dipped in jalapeno juice. So you get a little bit of, so what I'm trying to say is you get a little bit of sweetness from, from the spiciness of, of, the, of the pepper. So, and in my mind, I get that pineapple you know, soaked in jalapeno juice type of thing. It's not really pineapple, but it's, you get a, a bit of a sweetness to it. You know, may, maybe closer to a cherry. So I know completely different cherry versus pineapple. We're not even close, but you know, you're, you're getting kind of a, a sweetness to it. You know, I, you know, I swear to God, I do get some pineapple. I mean, it's, I think I'm just fixated on that right now. All right, I, I could, I could, we're going to taste it, but I could probably smell this for quite a while. This is good. I'm going two for two so far. It's got a bit of it's got a bit of um, of sweetness to it, almost like a chocolate covered cherry. A little bit of, of spiciness, a little bit of spice to it. I think they even talk about cherry. Yeah. All right. So aged for sixteen months in small French oak barrels, complex and elegant, showing rich black cherry berry nose, balanced with fine notes of dried herbs, vanilla, and oak. I think that's where I'm getting. There's some. There's some, definitely some creaminess, some vanilla. So that's the oak. Um, and the reason I saw the cherry, I thought about the cherries. I have as I'm tasting it. I'm looking. I, I saw the word cherry. So I saw it after I had already smelled the whole cherry stuff. This is one of those occasions where the wine label does describe what I'm tasting and smelling, which I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, surprised by that. But uh, good job with that, Galil Mountain Winery. Uh, you know, I did take some notes about about these about these uh, things. Uh, just going to go back to the Barkin. Uh, 
this this winery or the, the vineyards that that this is part of was uh, started in 1899 in an area called Founders Park in Patak Tikva. I probably just butchered that, but um, and they had a lot of owners over the years. Um, the current owners bought it in 1990, and they've renovated it. They've moved the offices to to Barkin, to whatever the Barkin Industrial Zone near Ariel. And then I think then they I was reading the history, and they they were the amount of production they had to do was too big for that facility, so they they had to expand somewhere else. I don't really remember where it was, but um, so it needs to say the the company itself has been around for a very long time, um, though it's had some new, had some several owners. Over the years, uh, a couple like larger corporations that have done different things. So, um, but excellent. Uh, Galil Mountain. Let me get to them. I didn't get a lot of stuff off of their website because most of the stuff is from uh, from their wine from, from shot on the wine, wine label. So, the Galil Mountain Winery. So, region the higher elevations of the Upper Galilee, part of the Galilee viticultural area, considered the best wine growing area in Israel. Now the Upper Galilee Mountains go as high as about 3,000 feet, though I don't think the vineyards are up that high. But um, they definitely, you know, are elevated. The vineyards are elevated, um, and that's going to help them with the uh, the ripening process. They're not going to get the huge amounts of heat. There will be some cooling involved, but uh, you know, the grapes benefit from elevation, uh, not just you know from aspect because of how how the sunlight hits the grapes, um, but if you're in a place like Israel, which is, you know, the the desert almost, I mean, the Middle East is very hot, um, but when you go up the mountains, it, it's not as hot as it is in the valley. So it'll help with the wines or with the grapes ripening, but not ripening too fast. So if I give that a 90 and I really like this, hello. <laughs> um... 91. I like this wine. It's got those peppers. It's good stuff. All right. So, moving on to our next wine. This is the Ella Valley Vineyards. Um, 2006 Syrah from the Ella Valley Vineyards, also from Israel, uh, the Ella Valley area. Um, Let's see, five percent cap. Oh yeah, ninety percent. I was like, what? Ninety percent Syrah, five percent Cabernet Sauvignon, and five percent Merlot and from the Ella, Ella Valley in Israel. And what did I have about them? Um, all right, so Ella Valley. Uh, I admit I don't really know my biblical history as well as as others, but this is the place of the famous battle between David and Goliath. So if it sounded familiar, that's why. I heard a little music in the background. I think that was the dryer. It plays this little musical tone when it's done. Um, the brand itself is five years old. Or they said after five years, but the dates make me think it's really kind of older than that because they planted their first vineyards in 1998. Um, 2001, they built the winery. And the first wines that they produced were a 2002 vintage. It's 2009, so I'm thinking maybe this is a seven-year-old brand itself um, because they, from the, what the website said, they they planted the vineyards, or they planted the vines, uh, and they created the winery, but they didn't, it wasn't called Ella Valley Vineyards at the time. So let's see how it is. Product of Israel, Judean Hills. Okay, it's a little bit more muted nose. I get a little more earthiness out of it. A little spiciness, like spices spiciness, not pepper spicy. Maybe a hint of cocoa. See how it tastes? It 
it's drier than this. This wasn't like super dry, which was it's kind of nice. Um, um, it's a little drier, but it's kind of juicy. I thought I was doing pretty good on time. I thought I was going pretty fast. Yeah, it's definitely drier. Um, it's kind of juicy. Just is there the the cocoa is still there? So maybe some cherries, like not chocolate covered cherries, but like if you had some cherries and maybe you dipped it in hot not like hot cocoa, or maybe or actually maybe we just put some cocoa powder on them and ate the cherries. That's kind of what it is. Um, pretty tasty. I don't think it's in the 90 point range. I'd give it an 88, but definitely uh, really good. Forgot to say 1998 also at Wine Library. Uh, so 998, 1998, 1998, uh, winelibrary.com. Go there, buy your stuff. Um, I do. Not all the time, but I buy, every once in a while, I, I buy stuff from, from uh, Gary and company. Especially when I'm looking for something very specific that I don't that I know like my local wine shops may not have, uh, or it's going to require a lot of driving around to find certain wines. Um, I just use the internet for that for everything. You know, I, I have a case for my phone. I went to the internet because while they might have been at the Apple Store uh, online on the Apple Store, um, I can't necessarily go to the Apple Store locally and find all the accessories and all the stuff that's there. So. Um, and okay yeah there was some spraying in the background now i can smell the spray so luckily I, all the wine's been drank uh good wines um anyway uh seek them out all three of them um in order of preference we've got it this way uh, these, these are just real close it's just two different styles of wines um you know just slightly more uh on the on the point value but um especially this it's nine ninety eight. If you can find it, uh, I would get it. Um, Israeli wines aren't very popular or aren't widespread, especially these. This isn't your dad's Manischewitz. Definitely not that. I've never had Manischewitz. I just you know know of it. Um, so it's not going to be that type of thing. Uh, these are serious wines. Uh, Israel's putting out serious stuff. So if you have a chance to try it, definitely find some of these bottles. Uh, find some of these wines, specifically these three or any of the other ones out there. Um, I've heard some great things over the past couple years, so try them out. Uh, that's going to do it for today's episode, uh, number 101. Um, technically, there is no producer or executive producer for this show because uh, no one's seen the other show yet. <laughs> Though between now and then, when I actually put this together and put it up, somebody may have contributed 50 bucks or more. But anyway, so uh, down here on the PayPal, you have the one-time donation. You can donate as much as you want. Um, the leaderboard, uh, the buy stuff, links, things have changed up a little bit on the site. Uh, hopefully by this show, I've gotten some, got some other swag that you can purchase so you can proudly tell people you're a leader um, or that you're leet and you're down with some good wine. Um, so between now and then, probably there is no producer. Uh, of course, I won't necessarily know who the producers are uh, until I do some of these, until I actually edit the videos. Whereas in other cases, I will know because I'll be recording it on that particular day. You know, obviously I'm still recording on the Monday. That's going to do it, and um, click the links. Tell your friends about it. It's all good stuff. Happy Hanukkah. See you later.